people there in most other black South African townships. Kill all those people there. We have guns, but we have no bullets. The police sealed off the whole area and raced about shooting. But they didn't stop the destruction of this clinic and refugee center. Two and a half thousand people had been sheltering here before the fathers came. Came, nurses said, in the armored police vehicles. These people of Crossroads, they were coming out of the police vehicles. We were looking at them, straight at them. The violence in Crossroads today is symptomatic of rising tensions throughout the country as the symbolic date of June the 16th, 10th anniversary of the Soweto uprising, draws near. Black groups have been gathering their forces. The death rate in the townships is rising. And all that despite an emotional appeal this weekend from Bishop Desmond Tutu. God, we do believe that we will be free. But why must the cost be so high? The authorities have already banned any meeting commemorating the Soweto anniversary. The police have been instructed to be tough, but the black organizations say they'll ignore the restrictions and carry on anyway. Law and Order Minister Louis Le Hansi is trying to force two new security laws through Parliament before June the 16th. One law would effectively enable him to declare a state of emergency wherever and whenever he wants. The other would allow the police to detain anyone without trial for up to six months. The White Chamber of Parliament passed the laws, but the coloured and Indian houses, in an unusual display of independence, have blocked them and called for safeguards. There may be compromise. If not, the government can eventually pass the laws through the President's Council, which it dominates, not though before June the 16th. Privately, the government's making it clear that if the two bills aren't passed by the end of the week, then the state of emergency will be reimposed or even martial law. Leading activists are already going into hiding because they expect wide-scale arrests as the authorities try to snuff out what could be an explosive upheaval next week. Big business is smelling trouble. Today, on these foreign exchanges, the RAND continued its headlong slide. Dealers expect violence, repression, and the inevitability now of international sanctions. This is Michael Burke for the 6 o'clock news in South Africa. It's dawn. The wreckage from yesterday's fighting still smoulders. So does the anger, so will the war. The Conservative Fathers now control the camp itself with the tacit approval of the police. The radical comrades driven to the outskirts, kept there by gunfire. The police in armoured vehicles block the comrades. They seem to hold the ring for the Fathers. It's a barbaric confrontation. No one is neutral. When the police pull back, the battle begins. There are more of the comrades than their enemies, but the fathers have most of the guns. They also have the police on their side. The authorities deny it, while white policemen push into areas hitherto dominated by the comrades, search for the men they want, and wait for the radio call. The fathers want us. The evidence of the police involvement on the side of the Conservatives is growing. These unidentified and armed white men who appear to be leading bands of marauding fathers on raids into the comrades' homes are thought to be policemen or administration board officials. Many relief workers who've been in crossroads have watched uniformed police helping direct the destruction. And we've seen Caspers walking, uh, driving alongside hordes of Vituka and we've just seen some of them throwing flames with the police right there and doing absolutely nothing about it throwing flares into the shack area to burn them down. There's been no attempt by the police to do anything in the way of dispersing the people or the aggressors at the moment. The fighting grows worse at midday, develops into random gun battles. A freelance television crew working for ITN is caught by the fathers. The black sound man escapes with a beating and is not badly injured. But the white cameraman, George Dayarth, is hacked close to death by axes. Tonight he's stable but critically ill. 
Two other newspaper men are injured by gunfire in what seems a coordinated attack on the media. There are dozens of other injuries, police buckshot sprayed at random into crowds and treated on the spot. The shots dug out one by one from uncomplaining flesh. The firepower against the comrades is too much. Time after time, they're forced to flee. They're pushed deeper and deeper into fringe encampments. There to be hunted down in warfare that throughout the day gets steadily worse and ever more vicious. This was Crossroads today. This is Michael Burke for the 9 o'clock news in South Africa.